We have a forewarn weather alert coming your way Wednesday. We're talking now winter storm warnings, winter weather advisories, all the latest straight ahead. All right, thank you, Brandon. Ticketmaster grilled on Capitol Hill over that Taylor Swift ticket fiasco. What lawmakers say needs to change when you buy tickets. Hey, Paula. Mass gun violence has become so mind numbing and emotionally numbing for so many of us. But there's a reason for it, scientifically, why you need to snap out of that numb feeling and fast. I'll explain. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Welcome to First at Four. I'm Karen Drew. Our forewarned weather team is watching a storm that may bring some heavy snow to the area right in the middle of the day tomorrow. Now you can see it is over Texas right now, but by this time tomorrow, the roads could be very slick. And we know many of you have questions about whether schools will close and how much snow you should expect in your neighborhood. Meteorologist Brandon Rue working hard to get everyone prepared. Hey, Brandon. Karen, we are looking at a big storm and this one you know, not the, the biggest we've ever seen, but the biggest of the season. So we are certainly getting ready for it. I want to get you set for the rest of this evening with the sunset at 537. It's 38 degrees. We've gotten a little sunshine. Temps will be falling back down through the middle and then eventually lower 30s, but dry as we look at what we're dealing with. A little increase in cloud cover ahead of this big storm coming out of Texas, as Karen mentioned, and look at the snow on the north side of this. But this storm right now down in Texas has prompted tornado warnings. Some of these emergency tornado warnings, meaning confirmed on the ground and really devastating parts of Houston way down south. Again, we're on the northern side of this, so it's all about the winter storm coming in here. It's a winter storm warning up Graded from a winter storm watch for Wayne, Monroe, and Lenaway counties Wednesday from 5 a.m. to 8 p.m. The advisories is everybody else, and really the concern throughout Wednesday will be nasty and tricky travel conditions, maybe a little less snow, but certainly anticipating parts of the warning areas to get upwards of six plus inches of snow tomorrow. We have you covered on the Forewarn weather app. You can put your phone camera right up to that QR code and get right into the Forewarn weather app, the latest on snow totals, uh, the storm duration, and Karen, there are other storms uh, behind this one in the seven day, all of it right there in our app. All right, we really appreciate it. Thank you, Brandon. We'll check back a little later. We've got breaking news. Classified documents are found at the Indiana home of former Vice President Mike Pence. Pence's attorney says a small number of documents with classified markings were boxed and transported to Pence's home at the end of the Trump administration. The attorney says Pence was unaware the documents were in his home and he intends to cooperate with the National Archives. The Justice Department is not commenting. This comes after classified documents were found at President Biden's home and former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate. Now to the two mass shootings that rocked California in just a matter of days. The latest happened in Northern California when a man opened fire at two agricultural businesses, killing seven people. Police say the 67-year-old shooter was an employee at one of the farms he targeted. Investigators say the only known connection between the shooter and his victims is they may have been co-workers. The suspect surrendered two hours after the shooting. Now that shooting happened two days after 11 people were killed at a dance hall near Los Angeles. Sources tell NBC News that investigators are focusing on a personal motive and don't believe it was a hate crime. The 72 year old suspected shooter opened fire in a dance hall in Monterey Park, then went to a second dance hall in a neighboring community. Video shows a man wrestled the gun away from the shooter there, likely saving many lives. And waking up to news of yet another mass shooting has many feeling really hopeless. Our Paula Tutman talked to experts today about the dangers of being numb to gun violence. Paula? Yeah, hi, Karen. I'm, I'm trying to think if there's anyone I've spoken to today who didn't have one of three general responses, one of being, oh my gosh, why does this keep happening? What can we do about it? And I just feel numb. And it really is that last response that I want to dial into because that in itself can actually exacerbate some very potentially dangerous situations. This will be 
Terry woke up this morning and like so many of us thought. It's kind of like you put it on the back burner because it's so common to see all the time that, you know, you just, it's part of life in the United States again right now. Same with Terrence. When I hear of more than one person, it just, just almost hard to believe sometimes. So many mass shootings, they feel almost commonplace. In fact, according to the National Gun Violence Archive, which tracks gun violence, as of 1236 this afternoon, the nation had already experienced 2,801 deaths, deaths due to gun violence. And there have already been 39 mass shootings, which means three or more people were shot in a single violent event. I'm almost numb to it. Our mental health expert, Cynthia Reynolds of First Family Counseling in Bingham Farms says it is a natural response to be numb to all of the violence. Our brain goes into a protection mode and wants to protect us from the danger. So we need to numb it so that we won't experience all of the hurt and pain that we're going through. Humans have natural defense mechanisms, fight, flight, freeze, and fawn. Now, the fight, flight, and freeze responses are pretty self-explanatory, but it's that fawn response that protects our brains from stress overload by just shutting down. I think sometimes we, um, we don't have the response that we think we should have or we don't have the response that we've had in the past toward the, towards these violent situations. So we beat ourselves up. We think, well, maybe we don't care or maybe it's not important anymore. We just need to realize that it's a natural defensive protection to protect yourself. However, it's important to recognize that natural response and move past it quickly, says our local forest safety expert, Darnell Blackburn. People become desensitized. And when you're desensitized, you, you don't think about the fact that things can happen to you. Because to remain numb means to be less vigilant. When you become desensitized and you're just shutting your brain down, you're missing your basic observation skills. You're not utilizing the skills that you have. You're not utilizing your eyes, your ears, your mind. You're not thinking about your surroundings. You don't have to walk around in fear, but you do have to observe. So be prepared, create a plan for if you see something that is odd to you, pay attention. Yeah, that's really a very important point. There is a difference between fear and vigilance. And don't be afraid to be vigilant. And our experts say, you know, you can compartmentalize that numbness, but you also have to be vigilant and aware so that you're looking around, you have your plan, you see exits, whatever you have to do to be safe in a public place. Not afraid, but vigilant. Karen? Such an important reminder. Paula, we do appreciate it. Thank you. Governor Whitmer is expected to call for policies to reduce gun violence in her state of the state address tomorrow. The governor held a roundtable in Brighton today ahead of her speech in Lansing. She heard from people about the issues impacting them, including inflation, taxes and teacher shortages. The governor will give her state of the state address tomorrow night in front of a joint session of the state house and Senate. We will have extended coverage and reaction to the speech tomorrow, starting at 630 streaming on local four plus. Well, the next phase of demolition is now underway at one of Detroit's most notorious abandoned properties. Of course, we are talking about this site, Sky 4, showing crews starting to take down a second major portion of the Packard plant. The area along East Grand Boulevard is the last portion of the plant owned by the city of Detroit. This phase of demolition should be finished in March, and the city hopes to redevelop the area. Today, Ticketmaster was in the hot seat on Capitol Hill in the wake of that Taylor Swift concert meltdown. Remember that? Well, fans had to deal with those long wait times and technical failures, leaving hundreds of thousands without tickets after hours of trying. Kimberly Gill in the newsroom. And Kim, it was the focus of a hearing in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee. What's the latest? It was, Karen, and good afternoon to you. The bipartisan hearing lasted nearly three hours, focusing on the merger of Ticketmaster and Live Nation. Lawmakers questioned whether the company is a monopoly and if a lack of competition in the ticketing industry is hurting customers. In the decade plus since the merger, Live Nation has consolidated its dominant position in the ticketing and live entertainment markets, and the result is a competition-killing strategy that has left artists and fans paying the price. Now, witnesses in today's hearing included the president and CEO of Live Nation, Ticketmaster's parent company, and their competitors, such as the CEO of SeatGeek. 
Lawmakers say 70% of tickets for major concert venues are sold through Ticketmaster. The problems come, came to a head in November when Ticketmaster's site, of course, crashed during a pre-sale event for Taylor Swift's upcoming tour. The company eventually canceled sales to the general public. Live Nation's CEO says the site was hit by cyber attacks and bots, and he asked for legislation to stop secondary ticket scalping. We were then hit with three times the amount of bot traffic that we'd ever experienced. And for the first time in 400 verified fan on sales, they came after our verified fan pass, password servers as well. While the bots failed to penetrate our systems or acquire any tickets, the attack requires to slow down and even pause our sales. This is what led to a terrible consumer experience, which we deeply regret. We apologize to the fans. We apologize to Ms. Swift. We need to do better, and we will do better. It is no mystery why no other company has significantly penetrated the primary ticketing market. Major venues in the U.S. know that if they move their primary ticketing business from Ticketmaster, they risk losing revenue they earn from Live Nation concerts. Now, experts say today's hearing could give the Justice Department significant political support for an antitrust lawsuit against Live Nation. We'll have more reaction from today's hearing and a report from Washington when you join us on the news at 5. Until then, Karen, we'll send it back to you. All right, we appreciate it. Thank you, Kim. Sure thing.